Hi there, welcome or welcome back to Returning Folks. This is the Daily Dharma. My name is Dina with the Empress of Ori. Thank you so much once again for joining. And let's get started with the code cards, the Sacred Geometry Activations Oracle deck. And find out what the collective vibration, energy flowing through the collective is for today. That's nice. Prosperity on the top here. Flipping out with empowerment and soul time. Taking the time to strengthen our perspectives and our goals and our strategies towards reaching a point of successful outcome in some matter. So prosperity doesn't need to be finance, but quite often our goals will include some type of security, safety, and financial freedom, liberation from oppression and bondage. These are all things that help the spirit to feel prosperous and enlivened. I'm seeing a celebration. Like I'm seeing balloons and maybe a changing light I mean, and this could be anywhere. I mean, it doesn't have to be like a, 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 a formal party or something, but I'm seeing the symbol, symbolic representation of like streamers and confetti and balloons in this prosperity card. So it's something that's going to be coming in that you will be celebrating. I'm seeing it like a pinata, but also an eyeball too. And during the pre-shuffle on the shamanic decks, I kept getting the witness, watchers, transpersonal, and the council, among a, a bunch of others, because that deck is huge and things flip out all the time. But I'm seeing this eyeball as almost celebration of closure in some type of a way, like some type of way of being or some old chapter of your life is coming to a close. Something you've been working hard towards manifesting um, is coming to successful fruition and there's a need to slow down, to step back mentally or emotionally in some type of a way to meditate on on the way that you're going to integrate this next step or uh, it's re reorienting -ori yourself to approaching this new way of life I'm feeling and it seems that with a little bit of reflection upon your habits and whatever it is that needs adjustment here that some slight tweaks are going to create more empowerment on both ends. Like if you're working with others, with the group, everybody taking a step back and brainstorming in their own time and taking a night to sleep on it, let's say for instance, and then coming back into the group uh, strengthened and having a lot more creative energy to lend the group because they've taken a step out of the of the momentum of stagnation perhaps and to step back into redefining their own goals and their own happiness and what would work for them like in the creation of some kind of a product like what would I like what would the people I know enjoy and how would it work with the things that I've encountered and everybody goes back into their subjective perspectives and then comes back in and then there's this um, there's a point of connectivity all and I'm also seeing the moment of fertilization with the human egg and all of the little sperm or four four trying to find a way in but you know that is a symbol for many of us it's that the feminine potential the cosmic womb 
where all ideas are gestating, then all of these stimula stimulants from the environment coming in, other people's input, other situations, remembrances, meditations, visions, preferences, all of these things come in to try to create some type of a, a mechanism of quickening, of change, of foresight, and it's like, to me, energetic brainstorming and coming back to what is that factor that makes me happy at the end of the day is somehow empowering the next move. Under the deck, we have magic. So I just want to get, well, let's just keep it moving here. We'll take those four cards here. So magic, I feel is more, well, we just saw 555 five, five on the timeline when I looked up and Okay, so magic can sometimes be the small synchronicities, the codes that unlock the next step. Um, synchronicities and guideposts from the universe showing us, oh, well, what about this thing? What about that thing? And also a distraction from our magic when we're always looking at all of these things around us. Um, but somehow there's that magic to um i feel is when we become in flow with what makes us happy the magic is flowing and if this is between a group or between um one-on-one -on -one bonding situation or a job or something else it looks like compromise to me a win-win compromise where soul time talks about needing a little step back a little step into the self so if someone seems to be pulling away from you just when things are getting good or maybe you have some type of feeling that something just happened that changed something you've been having that change and transition card combo coming out again and again there's something that is creating a moment of separation contemplation and reunion and then putting those things together for a higher understanding I feel and then that's when the magic begins to flow under the deck many paths here on the shamanic deck and oh, overflow overwhelm and plenty flipping right out at the split and shuffle there somebody's having an emotional response feeling overwhelmed with their choices, with their emotional responses. Maybe it's an overwhelm at work or play or in a relationship where um, there's a breaking point here and maybe being around water will be helpful in shifting those stagnant energies, getting them to come to rest at the low point. You know, as water does, it kind of, it pools in the low spots and then we can kind of sink in to those areas and help water the dusty desert earth in those areas, if you catch my meaning, those lower spots of the psyche, um, lower negative emotions, things that rear their ugly head just when it's getting good, and then there's that moment of um, either fear or, or, you know, witnessing yourself moving beyond fear but still needing the time to process because there's too many things maybe going on at once but okay let's see what else flipped out we had quite a few flipping out i got 29 horned cactus resourcefulness it seems to me putting up boundaries with others is important right now putting some space between yourself and another uh, it may seem to someone that another is being prickly or horned. <laughs> Could be many different things. One person wants something and the other person needs a little bit more space. Is feeling a little bit overly sensitive. And it's like if you touch them or step in the wrong way, then 
they may be a ticking time bomb, so they need that space for some type of enlightenment to happen. And seeing it, the sun here rising up or setting here, it's like somebody needs to maybe go see the sunrise or sunset over some body of water here. Thunder. I feel this is the anticipation of what comes next, the rumble of thunder and the change that is afoot, just everything is pointing towards the direction of extreme change and somebody is overwhelmed with the possibilities. Standstill, I felt that stagnant energy there, but I feel standstill here is that there's been a lot of stagnation and the standstill is talking about the soul time necessary to sit and bask in meditation at sunrise or sunset in some type of a way to sit with with nature and with spirit and with the higher self and lower self and integrate those polarities into oneself 11 11 and then to cut through see and i see this this blade two ways it always looks like a big dragon or reptilian eye to me and i was already seeing this as the eye here watching us telling us our prosperity is there and to celebrate but there's um some old cycles coming to a close and we're using our tools to create some type of closure resolution on this whatever is overwhelming us or them and creating this quickly taking time bomb energy here there is a need to stand back and maybe watching the moon as well i'm seeing the sun and the moon cycles going across there so something someone i'm feeling that transpersonal energy of feeling that the universe is in charge and the universe may be having a laugh at our expense that we thought that we had it all figured out and that we had it all right and now there's this element of compromise and something that may have seemed very important is now changing and then after that we see this moon card so the moon is an aspect of the feminine and the mother while the sun energy is the father energy in my way of thinking if that symbology has changed for you do what you need to do there's something here about our self-limiting beliefs as well i just saw in the soul time card up here the yellow constricted with the purplish colors here in a way it always appears a little differently when I look at these and they start changing, but it almost seems to me that there's a self-limiting belief that is creating this overwhelm where somebody feels that they have to keep going, keep doing, keep bending, accommodating, adapting, and taking on more, doing more to somehow show their worthiness or something and there's a need to integrate those two elements of self and feeling that solar plexus and crown energy and the crown energy is the ability and the use to perceive and use our magic with our belief structure because magic is all about belief belief is seeing the frequency of magic supports our intrinsic ability to grow and expand beyond this moment to move towards possibilities and expressions that are as grand and profound as we can imagine. All that is required is our belief in their manifestation. So there's something, maybe somebody is making an offer or asking for something here too with this prosperity card. Um, invitation, offer, celebration, a way to cut loose and to get back into their nature or something more simple, something more comfortable for a moment. Yeah, okay, so we've got under this next step, mindful group think. 
There's a lot going on in this card, and this to me talks about that same overflow, overwhelm and plenty. It's like we have unlimited resources in some ways here because we are resourceful and we're pushing away those things that are triggering us in the moment. Um, but it's almost like the Feast of Fools where there's so much of a good thing and we're not in a position to receive because there's the triggers and these little resistances all over the place that individually need to be looked at and dealt with and um, to come to our attention because there's out in the ethers right now with Saturn retrograde at the time of this broadcast and this is timeless but this is something that's an ongoing battle battle those spiritual lessons oh yeah perfect and I'm seeing Time Master here, which to me is a very Saturnian father authority limiting aspect and also the aspect of wisdom of the, the great father, that Saturnian information coming through. And here's gestation period, winter's dream, which we already talked about gestation, right? And under the deck, in the hand, the universe is your Partner. I was thinking of that as we started as well. Arrow, water underneath, the drum, holy mountain, sky dancer, surrender, and straddling world, wandering between realms. Yes, yeah, so I'm seeing somebody needs to uh, take a break to surrender to the limitations of their, their body, of their psyche, their emotional capacity to continue to take on and, and accommodate and adapt and to take some time out here to get back into the flow. But there's something, some type of celebration energy here that is being seen somewhat as either a threat or that our present state of, I want to say well-being, but it seems like it's not well-being. It's not being well here that somebody has taken on too much and is seeing the signs coming up that um, there needs to be a break, a separation between what is either creating addictions or baggage here to be cut free, to take a big look at the bigger picture. It may have to do with mother-father issues, but there's something about this, this Saturn energy, as I started to say, that Saturn is the limiter, and when it appears to be going in retrograde motion, it looks like it's going backwards. There's a need to be accountable for our actions and inactions, and I did see choices and consequences in the pre-shuffle as well. That one's been out a bit. Uh, talking about how we use our energy and we're never going to be perfect we're never going to do everything hundred percent right but instead of glossing over those things and saying one justification or another where well, well I was blah 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 I was triggered and so I just said that because of such and such or I only did that because I've always done that and um, other people can handle it so maybe you should Instead of clinging on to these egoic justifications of what happened, when individuals can become fully accountable, not for the other person's emotions, but for their own actions and inactions in a moment, there comes a time of, of maturity and, and trust and security and safety because if both people are independently sovereign enough to not be threatened, or to feel unequal when they have witnessed themselves in a transgression or an offensive maneuver or a statement that that could have been handled better something in that way I feel that there's all of these elements coming through but ultimately this this is something that that is um, it's something to be celebrated and that's the reason for the step back and the cutting free of the baggage that has held us back 
from taking that next step forward, from taking the celebration to heart, instead of feeling uh, stuck in these burdens and uh, responsibilities to everyone else and for their well-being to step back and to find out where our spirit's prosperity lies and how we can handle our own prosperity in a forthright and um, proactive manner instead of expecting that to come through other individuals. Under the deck, Kali Mahamaya coming out of that water here. Interesting. It's going beyond illusion into clarity, being seen for what, what you authentically care for and care about and express nectar of the lotus underneath, knowing where and how to go and how to go about self-care and uh, healing ourselves. For many people, you can use things like auditory music, creating music, creating sound. Uh, many people will enjoy going out into nature, feeling the wind, feeling the water, feeling the soil in their hands or beneath their feet grounding into earth and feeling that solidity and security of, of gravity and of the roots that are shown in all these enormous big trees. The small overcoming the large, the little pieces of grass that can crack through concrete, you know? Um, the microcosm, macrocosm, these things can be humbling and can help us to watch how nature participates with each other and, and works in symbiotic unity consciousness and can help us to gain some type of insight or perspective or message from whatever sources and guides we need to connect with at that time. So we have a little bit of a pile up here with the Kali and Kuan Yin mixed deck. I got this one in the pre-shuffle and I almost kept it out. 38, the Tao. Number six, Daughter of the Phoenix. Maybe you have some Scorpio in your chart or the Phoenix is one of your totem mythicals animals. It's a very fiery, transformative Plutonian energy. Pluto may be prominent in your chart. But this is, it doesn't have to be a feminine, but it is the feminine aspect within an individual rising up again and again uh, from the illusion of victimization and betrayal and woundedness and, and um, cutting away, burning away all of that previous injury and gathering the courage and empowerment of of your strength and your value. The amorous loot, that is a, a rising vibration shining through, and that may be somebody who has a very beautiful voice, and it may be somebody that can do some really high notes, because there's something about the amorous loot and the high vibrational in, um, intonation that I'm hearing in my voice, it's very high pitched and it may seem a little transhuman, but some people will find themselves being able to make noises beyond themselves in the zone here. Weave the future golden number 44. You may be seeing a lot of number synchronicities, um, but as well, I feel this is everything in life syncing up and yeah it's like a, a self-transformation witnessing the flow here transforming and transmuting any lower vibrations cutting anchor and celebrating in that balloon energy like almost lifting you up rising you up with music or or the elements of water or something like that or fire um mixing and mingling that inner masculine and feminine polarity here with that rising vibration and drawing together light and dark here and I saw 2444 just then to 
create the future that we want. It, leaving the future golden, it's like we want to take this step back, or we don't want to, but we kind of have to take a step back from our prosperity in the moment for perspective. And to take a step back will help us to move forward in a, in a healthier way. And then we have Mahakali. And we had Mahamaya, and now we have Mahakali. Instead of reading them all, um, well, they are so well written. It's such a, a difficult thing to pick just one or two. So I want to read you just a couple of these. The Tao is always flowing, always nourishing life into creation, always presenting steps and solutions, and always reminding us that we're perfection in this moment. You're being guided to relax and to allow life to flow. So this says you're being invited into a more advanced spiritual classroom. So we talked about invitation and celebration. Uh, sometimes we think that the more advanced means more effort, and yet in spiritual matters, as we mature, we become more able to stop attempting to control and to direct from our more limited perspective and instead become open to receiving and being directed by higher forces which include our own divine essence at one with the source of all so we talked about that um, with resourcefulness and the source of all and the limiting self-limiting belief structures here with horn cactus and the soul time card where we're in an efforting Habit, habit pattern that is changing now and we're being told to meditate more often, to receive more often, and to do less in some way to produce more. So instead of keeping the group there to brainstorm together, sending everyone home for self-care night and um, everyone comes back more creative. So then the number six card is Daughter of the Phoenix. Oops. I hope you enjoy these readings. They're gorgeous. When the soul is ready to spread its wings, it goes through a deep cleansing, a purification, and preparation for new levels of spiritual wisdom, power, and light. So this is that cleansing and cutting away. Cutting away sounds real aggressive and abrasive and as though we're being, you know, sliced and diced. Um, so maybe that's the... Um, a little bit less than gentle way to say it, but as we go through this period, there's that me tax energy of releasing fears and anxieties of the past, releasing ourselves from some of our long-held dreams and beliefs that we've witnessed now were that of someone of a different time and that we've changed and become empowered by a different dream. And it's a time of maybe grief and release of something that used to be. Maybe you're going through something like empty nest or the um, release of a, a, a relationship contract or a marriage or something like that. So just like the phoenix that is baptized through celestial fire to be born anew, you're going through such a phase of heavenly purification, preparation, and initiation. This is an advanced phase of soul growth and soon after you will enjoy greater spiritual peace, divine power and advancement on your divine life path. Kuan Yin, daughter of the Phoenix, has been through fire, both physical and heavenly, and has ascended into a position of great spiritual peace, power and authority. She guides you now to claim your rebirth and ascend. So very interesting too right so something being left behind with that phoenix it's what is being burned down what is being um what tower moment has come through in the past and that rubble is now needing to be cleared out it's like for a while we kind of sift through the ashes of the the home that may have burned down symbolically or real real and then at some point the rest is having to be scrapped there's nothing of value left and those mementos and remembrances and memories they need to be integrated in a new way and then 
the new can be rebuilt in a different, better way, hopefully. So whatever doesn't work out is for the highest good because nothing that is yours will, will be lost, I want to say. Uh, yes, claim your rebirth and to ascend. So you may have had a dark night of the soul as well and coming back into that integration phase. So it says, just like if we're moving house, we would need to sort through possessions. Sometimes it's an opportunity to let go of that which we don't wish to take with us into our new life as we prepare to move into a higher level of consciousness. There are old habits, stuck emotions, and stagnant energy that don't belong to our new life cycle. So that's exactly what we're talking about here. This prosperous new cycle is demanding... <laughs> Bug. <laughs> Jumpy or what? Uh a new life cycle that is demanding the release of old habits, old addictions, old lower ways of being, or things that just don't help us on the next leg of our journey. So this new cycle is leading you to greater spiritual enlightenment, happiness, well-being, and prosperity, success, spiritual responsibility, and leadership. So more accountability. And then the next two, 34 and 44, another 10 number gap. I've been seeing a lot of 10 minute or 10 gaps, and I just saw 31, 21 on the counter. The Emerilus Loot. You've won a victory, beloved, a victory over the past. And the Emerilus Loot is sounding through every cell of your being, heralding your rising vibration as you leave fear behind you once again. In fact, the Loot says you're growing fast. In spiritually, you are outgrowing your old life even more so. When your vibration changes, so too does your life, beloved. This is natural. It's safe and loving for you to release that which no, that which no longer feels right for you, no matter how much it was important to your old life. It may not have the same place in your new life. So two messages saying the same thing, that there is... Um, an old comfort zone, an old way of being. Maybe you were always the one in charge and now somebody has come and you're witnessing them as your equal and they're even sometimes more educated or more capable of certain things and you're used to being the one. Well, it's because you've leveled up now that now you're in a realm with those that are maybe equally capable and this may seem a humbling experience. It may seem, if you have a lower perspective or value of self, it may seem like you're being challenged or others are competing or that you're being shown to not have the same capacity. But it's a challenge to continue to reach beyond your own personal best. But not in a competitive way, but in a cooperative way. So, just as a musical instrument can play notes at a higher or a lower vibration, your own vibration is being refined as you're growing so fast spiritually. This is wonderful. Be brave as you trust that you are allowed. Indeed, you are spiritually encouraged to allow your vibration to continue rising, even though that sometimes means leaving people, places, and situations and things behind. Some people in situations will grow with you at an equal pace. Others will meet you at the next upward spiral of your unfolding consciousness and life path. And still others will weigh you down and will need, you will need to let them go so that they may live their own destiny according to their own choices and timing. So you may have been surrounded by a number of people that made you feel like you'd a man because you were better than them. But maybe it was just the company you were keeping, and now you're being challenged by equality. And your ego is is overwhelmed, but in that processing, there's a magic unfolding here. So weave the future golden. Something good is coming your way, and this is right above the prosperity standstill and the blade card. Kuan Yin urges you to weave your future into the present moment to call in and draw to you the opportunities, teachings, circumstances, and synchronicities waiting for you. 
that will enable your soul to live its divine destiny with greater abundance, bliss, and creative fulfillment. Do you know how much the divine wishes to support and assist you in living your heart's truth this lifetime? Kuan Yin, with grace and compassion, wishes to help you to ascend to the next level of your life right now. Into the next level of your life expression so that your soul light may shine more brightly on the planet and help you and other beings to live with more heart and less fear. So this is the sublimation of the, of the wounded masculine and wounded feminine and the rising of the divine within both. And with that blaming, we can often lead to blaming others who are the most different, who are maybe those on the opposite end of the gender spectrum or the opposite end of, of culture or of race or ethnicity or, or whatever, an opposite way of thinking, team white and team black in the yin yang, you know, like, oh, I'm the lightness and the clarity because this speaks to me and it, it speaks through my heart. And somebody else is like, yeah, but hold on a minute. Are, is what you're saying X, Y, and Z? Because that seems a little bit backwards. And have you thought about it this way? And all of a sudden being turned on one's head, like, wow, but you're the darkness. How can you speak light into my light and enlightenment? It's like this mind-opening moment, an ego-shattering moment that um, doesn't have to be quite so intense, but in the processing of, of that message, it's taking more time to fully process and I feel find our way away from the patriarchal precedent that has been set and to unthaw the ice princess, the ice queen here. It's like the, the divine feminine has been shelved for many, many centuries or ages, and the masculine has gained dominance and control. And I know this might sound like a feminine bent, but I heard somebody talking about how the patriarchy and how men were the problem. And that's not what I'm trying to say. I feel that the overestimation and the inequality of either gender is the problem. And it's so long as either finds that power dynamic at odds with the other, there's not going to be middle ground that is sustainably fostered. And so these Masculine and feminine, it's like the masculine has become rigid and stagnant and dusty and desert-like. And the feminine has become icy and brittle and, and tender and fragile in ego structures is what I'm talking about. And those are the polarities within both of us. So our inner urges are habitual and patterned and ingrained and lacking in emotion and our emotional nurturing abilities are um, are not flowing they're brittle they're practiced they're inauthentic and frozen in time and space and it's time to reconsider what we think others need from us and what we are authentically here to share with others, which is more proactive and productive. So 16 Mahakali, beautiful card. 16 corresponds with the major arcana of the t uh, tower, which we already talked about. Something coming to a final close. Maybe it's like your youth or your... Um, your single life or um, independent job where you had a, a predictable salary and you were able to set your own time but now you're going into a, a time of self-reliance and it could also for others be a time of financial scarcity and moving into a partnership where there's 
a flow, an abundant flow, a prosperous dynamic of support, resources, and connectivity, overwhelmed by the plentiful of um, resources available coming forward and feeling that thundering towards you and needing to just kind of step back for a moment. So I'll show you this again. It appears she's the ten-handed goddess. I read this card the other day. It came out with one that was maybe a four-handed goddess and it it's beautiful. Her magnificence steadies the anxious mind and reassures the heart of the empowering grace that arises through trust in her. Attempting to fathom the wisdom behind the workings of the Divine Mother would be like trying to cram the entire ocean into a teacup. Such wisdom is vast and our perspective is limited, yet we don't need to understand Divine Will to benefit from it. Better to allow her creativity, resourcefulness, and unlimited vision to affect, to take effect in our lives, bringing us every grace necessary for our blessed fulfillment. So the resourcefulness here. So there's something else here. Okay, so first of the ten wisdom goddesses, the Mahavidya, is the ten-armed Mahakali. She is laden with her sacred weapons, like the blade. First of the, oh, excuse me, many arms and weapons symbolize the capacity of the Divine Mother to work beyond human limitations. The contrast is not intended to diminish the dignity of our humanity. Humans have a tremendous capacity for heroism, kindness, love, grace, and generosity. Rather, it's an encouragement to engage with the Divine with perfect trust in our hearts. Multiple weapons represent multiple creative powers to conquer multiple issues. More than two arms indicate that divine workings are not limited by our human perspectives and capacities. This is reassuring. The divine can accomplish works beyond what would be possible through human effort alone. And so we are talking about the spiritual prosperity of tapping into our unique magic and flow. Maha Kali means Great Kali. She is known as the guardian of the cosmic order, the one who selects the timing for all unfoldment. Nothing can be accomplished without the necessary preparation and not before it's the right time for it. Such process and timing are determined according to higher wisdom, capable of assessing and meeting the spiritual needs of all beings simultaneously. While we might not know this timing, we can gain trust in it. I'm paraphrasing here. Even when events seem to be going against us or we cannot see the way to succeed, how do we proceed with such trust? There's no magic to it. It's a choice we make again and again. We, when we sense the next step before us, we proceed. When we need to wait, we wait. We don't try to, ha to force it, but we tune into our hearts and sense what's guided in each moment. We allow ourselves to feel intimately known and connected with the divine as our ally, rec recognizing the sequencing of certain events need to happen, enabling lessons to be learned so we're ready at every stage for what needs to come next. We're not being denied or blocked. We are being loved. So... Don't let anybody tell you that other people don't uh, need that alone time or separation time because it's divine right now. So I'm going to move on and into the, the you versus them spreads based on this, looking like somebody's needing a little bit of alone time and, and that this is going to propel us into that point of prosperity. In spirit so the universe is our partner in this so whatever is happening now we are going to have something to celebrate very soon and one of those main things is a very profound raised vibration and flow with our magical capacity so whatever you're feeling thundering towards you that's maybe overwhelming and um, 
maybe unexpectedly coming very quickly, here it is and we're ready for it and we're being told keep on preparing energetically, take your time, take those self-care moments and here it comes. Ready or not, here it comes, right? So take care and check out the You versus Them today, if you will, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye.